G'day, it's Rob here. Um, on the internet there's a lot of videos there, uh, YouTube videos, and they're really good, a lot of them. Um, uh, covering um, using a lathe and the basics of other lathes. Um, but some of the really simple stuff that you'd think, you know, there'd be videos on it, actually there's not much there. And one of them that, uh, one of the things that can be confusing to a new lathe owner is taking out and putting back the, uh, the jaws in a, in a, in a scroll chuck. Um, a three jaw scroll, scroll chuck is the most common type. And even though the jaws are basically have numbers stamped into them, quite often those numbers are meaningless. I mean, if they're Asian chucks, I mean, the numbers can <laughs> be absolutely useless if they're not even, if they're readable even. A lot, of, a lot of the time you can't even read them or they're worn off or they're so badly stamped. I mean, look at that, 2743, what the hell is that? Oh, what's this one got on it? 7743P, meaningless gibberish. And this one, 174, can't read it because it's so faint, it's all rubbed off. No idea. So, okay, how do you know which of those jaws is number one? Well, it's quite simple, really. The scroll plate in a chuck is basically like a big thread. And the jaws basically mate with that scroll. And easy way to find out which is number one jaw is you, you line them up like this. You'll see that they only go in one position where the, the machined in slots go across on a, on a roughly, what, 10 or 10 degree angle. And so basically they slope upwards from left to right. And I can tell you without looking at it that this will be number three. Number three. This will be number two. Number two. And this will be number one. Number one, I've got a notch filed into them. So that's how you tell. Even if the jaws are mixed up and they're rusty, you can't read them. You only go in one position. There you go. Three, two, one. One's always your, always the one with the uh, the notch closest to the to the face. So that's how you read chuck jaws. Now, with your chuck, when you get it, before you take them out, I mean you don't know how well these jaws are marked. So what you want to, if it's a brand new machine or the chucks are, the jaws are pulling up properly, you always want to uh, mark them with text to pen before you take them out, and then. Uh, Check the markings in the in the in the housing, the, the main clutch body, uh, main chuck body, against the markings on the key on the actual um, chuck jaw itself. And uh, generally, the bodies are marked okay, um, but you can always work out, as I said, where number one is because you just do it that particular way, the way I showed you, and provided you've. Uh, mark the jaws and the body relative to each other before you take it out, you can always say, ah oh, yes, number one, it went in here, that's number one. And you can soon find out where, um, where number two and three is. You go one way or the other, but you know where, where number one is, so you're laughing. So that's, that's, uh, that's the easy part. Then you mark them, you mark your jaws um, against the body with a centre punch or something, and then it's easy to just t take them out and put them back, you know exactly which slot they go when you're not trying to peer in to the slot and read the back of the jaw and all that mucking around. So you always want to mark them. You notice I also have got marks on the actual backing plate and the and the chuck body as well to mate, so that you always put your chuck back, take it off and put it back on the same mounting position. Use the same bolts and the same slots, and then that, that way you won't have any run out problems um, if it's machine if the jaws are machined up correctly. Okay, so that's the basic stuff. Now, how do you go putting the jaws back in, mating them correctly with the scroll plate uh, once you've taken them out? Well, I'll show you. Okay, now we're going to put our uh, jaws back in. Now, what's the easy way to do this? Well, we've got a mark so we know which one goes in which, so three goes into three. Two goes into two. Number one goes to number one. Now, once you've done that, turn number one down to the bottom. Just 
This works the same way for internal or external jaws. These are fully pushed in. Apply a little bit of upwards pressure on with your fingers against the, uh, the bottom jaw. Put your chuck key in and turn, turn the chuck key anti-clockwise. And while you're turning, keep that pressure up on the bottom jaw, number one, and you get to a point where you'll feel it click in. Just keep turning anti-clockwise. There it goes, you hear it click in. Make sure the other two are pushed in. Now, turn the key clockwise. There you go, easy as that. So I'll pull into position, dead even, and uh, everything will be totally uniform, as you can see. No problem. That's the way you have to do it. If you try and do it any other way, um, huh, you're going to have trouble. You'll have one jaw not coming in far enough or whatever. So easy peasy, just do it that way. Always remember, number one has to engage first. Um, so you're anti-clockwise with the key until number one snaps into place. Make sure the other two are in and then just go clockwise and it will pull up every time. Okay, I know that's basic stuff. Um, and experienced guys will go, oh, you and this is so boring. But I know that when I started off, uh, you know, it, it's a bit tricky until you figure it out. And, um, yeah, the videos you expect to be there aren't always there to help the newbies. And uh, although I won't be doing a lot of this, this is just one I thought, well, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's worth putting up. So uh, I, hope, I hope you found it useful. And, uh, okay, happy machining. See you next time. Cheers.